actuator air leaks can result in a decrease of control valve performance. This video will explain the process I use for testing for air leaks on a rising stem actuator. To begin with, you will need to connect a three-way valve to the normal supply port of the actuator. We will be connecting a pressure gauge to one side of the valve and the pressure supply to the other side. The regulator should be adjusted to the normal operating pressure for the control valve. Once air is applied to the actuator, wait for the valve to reach its max travel position. Once the valve has reached its upper travel limit, rotate the handle of the three-way valve. This will connect the actuator to the pressure gauge, trapping the air. If the gauge pressure begins to drop immediately, you should check for leaks in the valve and pipe fittings before you assume the actuator seal is leaking. The air must remain trapped in the actuator for a period of no less than one minute. During this period of time, the pressure on the gauge is monitored. When the test is complete, the actuator should not leak air at all. However, as long as the leak rate is no more than one PSI per minute, the performance should not be affected. There are numerous potential leak points on a Fisher rising stem actuator. The molded diaphragm is sandwiched between the upper and lower case of the actuator. Air can potentially leak from here if the bolts are loose, if the diaphragm is cracked, or if the sealing surface of the actuator is damaged or bent. The diaphragm plate is connected to the actuator stem with a bolt. Since this bolt extends through the diaphragm, this is another point for a potential leak. This leak will cause air to escape from the vent. If you notice the pressure gauge dropping during the pressure test, you can remove the vent from the top and place your finger over the hole to determine if air is passing through the diaphragm. On reverse acting actuators, there are three O-rings that are used to isolate the actuator diaphragm chamber from the spring chamber. If one of these O-rings fail, air will be allowed to leak into the spring chamber. Where the lower half of the actuator case is bolted to the stem, there is a seal. This seal can become brittle and will be easily broken when separating the lower diaphragm chamber from the stem. The molded diaphragm itself is another potential leak point. Chemicals and moisture can damage the diaphragm if they're allowed to enter the chamber. The vent on top of the actuator prevents this from happening. If this vent becomes damaged, you can replace it with a piece of bent tubing. High temperatures can also damage the diaphragm. If your actuator will be exposed to prolonged periods of extreme heat, you should use the silicone high temperature diaphragm, which can be distinguished by the orange color. Actuator air leaks are common, and by adding this quick test to your routine maintenance, you can improve the reliability of your control valves.